Hi there, welcome to another video from the Vickers MG Collection or Research Association. In this video, I want to re-enter a small series that we did, which was photo analyses and film analyses. So we'll talk more about a particular photo or film uh, that we've seen and start to explain a bit more about the Vickers machine guns that we see in it, because they'll probably be related to that, uh, and some of the uniforms and equipment, etc. And this photo is one that we have in our collection. It is a you know, a small, I think it's about ooh, four inches by three photograph uh, that we bought on eBay uh, some, some time ago with very little information about it. Uh, but because we have the original photograph, it isn't subject to commercial licensing or anything like that. We, we think this is probably the only copy of this photograph in existence. So it's something that we can use in our publications. And... If, if somebody does know the original photographer that does have the rights to it, then get in touch with us and, and we'll see how we can accommodate those. But in this case, we have very little information to lead us to who the original photographer was or anything. There's merely two words on the back, gun cleaning, uh, which they might be doing. I don't think they are. We'll get into that. Uh, but what we do know is what was in the description provided by the eBay seller in that it's the Bedfordshire and Hertfordshire Regiment in Shanghai in around 1927. There's no confirmation of that, but equally there is nothing to say that that's wrong. So let's have a look at the photograph. We've got a Vickers machine gun, as you can see here, being shown. Uh, and you know, it's being got out of its transit chase there. There is the tripod being set up over here, which is why I'm not necessarily sure it's gun cleaning, because um, uh, there, there's also some ammunition on site. So it's, you know, it looks like they're getting the kit ready. There is a haul, there is a cart over here in the background, and there's another looks like gun team over there sorting their stuff as, out as well. So, so it could be a subsection two guns getting this stuff ready for the day, ready for an exercise or training. So let's just piecemeal, let's just take a quick look, let's zoom in and see what he's doing. So this chap here, they've got their pith helmets, they've got khaki drill helmet, these are sort of um, Bombay solar tropical helmets that they've got there, uh, but he's got a thousand round box of 303 ammunition. We can see on the lid that it's actually marked seven ammunition, VII shown there on the lid, um, which is to be expected. Mark 8Z wouldn't come in for some time yet. So, you know, he's, and he's opening that up. This these, this lid has slid out of here, this top, and he's probably going to get some ammunition boxes ready. Um, can't see what the chap in, he's got in his hands there. It might be a steam bag, so a condenser bag, but it equally might not be. It's really unclear. Um, so we've got this, this chap here, setting up the tripod just a standard mark 4 vickers tripod that's there and we've got these chaps over here uh getting the tripod out the, the getting the gun out of the transit chest so it looks like a smooth barrel case in vickers so one of the later first world war production examples it looks like it's got a leather i'm going to say leather because far east we generally see leather barrel casing covers more so than woven ones and the barrel casing cover doesn't generally appear in early photos so pre-second world war photos unless it is leather and in the far east so it seems to have been one of those locally produced or local pattern items that helps prevent uh, heat build up or heat transfer uh, to the soldiers uh, a little bit more in these warmer climates uh, looks like that we might have a condenser hose uh, just hanging off or has come out of the case as well there um uh, we can't really see the detail of these chaps in the background that just looks like a a local car it doesn't look like the limbered wagon or anything but it looks like there's a uh, indian soldier leading that car over there as well what's what's interesting about this photo is what's in the foreground the accessories so we've got a shovel handle you know and that's that is what it is we've got a range of ammunition boxes they look all to be number eight belt boxes uh there might yeah they look to be number eight they've all got this solid you know the, the side um, the deeper sides there. None of them have got the very deep sides that would mean they're a number nine. We've got the cleaning rod on the top here, uh, which is nice to see, nice detail. Uh, how many bikes have we got? One, two, three, four. Right, let's start again. Uh, one, two, three, 
4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we've got 13 belt boxes there, um, which is 3,250 rounds. Likely there to be one more. Normally we see 3,500 rounds being carried, so there might be one more. This actually might be the bag, uh, the steam bag on the top there. And then what we've got here is the, uh, looks like it's the Mark I leather spare parts box. Um, and what we also have, this drum, is the steam drum. Now, we're lucky enough to have found one of these on eBay, uh, completely misdescribed. So it just goes to show that there are, um, there are bar well, I say bargains, it wasn't a bargain, but there are um, things out there misdescribed. This was being sold as a Georgian tankard, you know, leather war drinking vessel of some sort the end has been cut out on ours uh, which is a bit disappointing um, but it seems to be the end that doesn't that is plain or doesn't have the brass fitting or anything so we hopefully restore it but this was what was used instead of the condenser can and instead of the bag yeah sorry instead of the two gallon can so you'd have the steam bag where the water would be coming into from the gun and then this was what was used to carry the water for the gun and there's a small valve on one end or a small tap that can be opened up uh, to you know to, to let the flow into the gun it's um i think it carries about two gallons it's a similar sort of size it's about 14 inches long and about seven inches in diameter and then you can see all the rivets around here all the studs that hold the leather together and make it watertight because there's no glue or anything being used it's just leather on leather make it as tight as possible and it won't leak um and what seems to have happened so this is a this originally appears in the maxim uh, photographs beyond the pack saddlery and what seems to have happened is that this stuff lasts longer in the far east or in tro in troops that remain using pack saddlery for much longer because leather is more forgiving uh, on horses you know if it drops or if it falls it's not going to break open like a metal can might it's not going to get dented in the same way it's more forgiving so it seems that this older stuff let's like, say steam bags and leather um uh yeah steam bags leather condenser barrels and the leather ammunition boxes possibly were being used because let's say why would you know, the wooden stuff just breaks when you drop it these have a little bit of give and a little bit of bounce so it's quite nice to see these in use but i haven't seen it much later um so let's say this is late 1920s probably haven't seen it much later than this because we start to see the diminishing of pack saddlery really uh certainly in the late 1930s we see more less and less but um it that may well exist so it, it's a great photograph for showing the accessories um, more so than it is the gun and so can't see any ammunition belts but i would say they're getting set up ready for some exercises maybe ready for a kit inspection uh that day um and say the bedfordshire and hertfordshire regiment in shanghai china in the late 1920s